general principles of international law recognized by civilized people. This, this entire idea of there are some people who are civilized and there are some people who are not civilized, it's a very European idea. Uh, but over the last few years, the last 10, 15 years, this entire structure has changed. We've seen the political influence of what, are, what were considered third world countries be, be becoming influential in these international political institutions and multilateral political institutions. The biggest example of this would have been the election of the Indian nominee to the International Court of Justice defeating the nominee that was put forward by the United Kingdom. Uh, and for the first time since the inception of the International Court of Justice, that was the first instance where a permanent five uh, members nominee was defeated in an election. So we've seen lawyers behave in two different ways to re-globalize the system because of the inequities that they brought in. The first is by creating actual and new structures, whether it be it through international investment treaties or legislations domestically. And the second is involve themselves in the political thought process of reworking what were considered entrenched structures of the international negotiating fora and international law. Uh, and that is a process that we are seeing continue at this stage. Thank you, Pranay. That is a really wonderful thought from Pranay, uh, especially like uh, how the treaties are formed, how they are, uh, you know, uh, 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 terminated or redrafted. Uh, wonderful thoughts on that. So, what exactly? Reglobalization is shrinking of the borders and doing more business. So, who who better than a lawyer? So. Lawyers like uh, Pranay and all are in the midst of such a uh, reglobalization, doing more business, shrinking of borders, framing uh, various treaties. They immediately, you know, the lawyers are the one who comes to your mind. So the role of lawyers will increase, has to increase, despite there is AI, no AI. In a reglobalized world, going forward, the role of lawyers is going to increase. With this, let me come to the end of the session. I am open to a few, couple of queries, if you may permit. Sir, we need two minutes. Okay, two minutes, one query. Yes, please. <laughs> our country for India to not be a part of any sort of uh, global insolvency or bankruptcy regime. I know in the current court there are certain provisions for which you know, in the future something can be notified but as of now we don't recognize any foreign bankruptcy and we are not part of any global regime either. So in terms of trade, in terms of investment, in your opinion how much is it hurting us in terms of globalization and in terms of doing business? Addressing. Um, you know, so I have been actually involved with the, some of the free trade agreement negotiation. So unfortunately, the international uh, insolvency is not an area that has become part of this kind of agreements. But I should say that in over a period of time, new topics have been added to the trade and investment agenda for that matter. So Pranav spoke about the bilateral investment treaties. Uh, you know, that is, that is one particular way of providing protection that's not applicable to insolvency for that matter, but a new a range of topics are actually coming into trade agreements and government procurement, sustainable food system, labor, you know, trade environment. All these issues are coming in a big way. In certain areas, you know, maybe insolvency is an area that actually falls within private international for that matter, I suppose. So here we have some of the ancestral conventions, sometimes they're actually modern convention, but ultimately the obligation is on the consent country to pass a law and implement the that particular convention domestically. So even when it comes to a number of private law areas, we have got ancestral convention and modern conventions being brought into force domestically. But um, to an extent, I'm not aware of any international, public international agreement that actually deals with this kind of issue as well. No, I think that's all uh, we have time uh, for today. And uh, any queries, uh, we are ready to take it offline. We'll be here for the rest of the day today. Thank you all. Thank you for patience hearing. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to all the speakers for such an intriguing panel discussion.
CIRT is the sponsor for our event today. So I would now like to request to present a small token of gratitude to our speakers. Moving ahead to our next panel, the topic of which is new type of legal services and new form of delivery of legal services. The moderator for this panel is Mr. Manish Lamba, General Counsel, DLF Cyber City Gurgaon. The speakers for this panel are Professor Dr. Mandeep Kumar, Professor in Law, Lloyd Law College, Greater Noida, Mr. Nishan Singh Rawat, Assistant Professor, Lloyd Law College, Greater Noida, Mr. Prakash Shivastav, Advocate, Supreme Court, Legal Consultant, White Collar Crimes, and Mr. Perubur, CEO, ININDI Sweden, Judge at Stockholm Administrative Court. We welcome you all. A huge round of applause for the next panel. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, uh, welcome to this session. And uh, we, uh, this panel constitutes of an in-house lawyer, a practicing lawyer, two gentlemen who teach law, and a gentleman who is a judge. So that makes the quorum complete. Uh, I'm not going to burden you with some legalities and things of that nature. We are looking at what are the new delivery systems the legal system, how things are changing. By the time you people will be sitting on this side and looking at the young crowd, law would have changed, the delivery system would have changed, and many things and many changes are going to come. So how, um, I think uh, today we can divide the world that it is pre-COVID and post-COVID. So what is the basic difference which has happened pre-COVID and post-COVID is that we all came into Zoom and all these things became very popular and in so far as that led to something which is known as the delivery systems changed, online, offline and hybrid. I would request my friend Prakar to explain that what is the online, offline, hybrid system. Please feel free to answer any question in between um, at any point of time so that we can make it more inter interactive. Thank you. Prakar. Well, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I start up, uh, my name is Prakar. I'm a practicing advocate. If I talk about the filing system as far as the legal practice is concerned, pre-COVID and post-COVID, then we can witness, basically, there's a huge change, especially in terms of technology. If we talk about the pre-COVID era, when we used to file any document in court, like it used to go in the same conventional manner, like you have drafted something and you go to the court for getting it filed. I'll particularly talk about like in so Honorable Supreme Court, what we used to do was, like if there, there is certain kind of a draft, if there's some kind of SLP or a counter affidavit it has been drafted. After getting it, after having the signature of the advocate on record on it, you go and you get it filed at the filing counter. But right after the COVID time, even during the co after the few months of the COVID time, it happened that, that the, there were certain new guidelines introduced by the court during that time for practicing, like uh, you can file the documents online from the, directly from the IDs of the advocate on record. But if we come in the present era now, like the things have been normalized, 
So now what the thing is that certain time we see that as far as the filing is concerned, the documents are being filed conventionally by the physical mode as well as through the online mode also. Moreover, as far as the legal practice is concerned, when we talk about the pre-COVID and the post-COVID era, then we can see a lot of things have been changed by the virtue of technology, like the hearing is concerned. We can see that we can appear online in the courts with the, as far as the hearings are concerned, and there are documents being filed, and there are certain other practices which are being executed through the online mode. Moreover, if we talk about the pre-COVID era, then the thing it used to be that we used to run to one court to another court, certain time, even it involved a lot of time taking, you stuck, you got stuck into the traffic, you have to take the pass over. There were certain issues like so com coming up, certain time you cannot reach the bench before the matter was being taken up by the court at that time. By the virtue of the online mode, it was there that you can sit back in your office, you can attend all the matters back to back. So these are the things which I would like to tell. Thank you, Prakar. This is uh, very insightful. So basically, we would have seen it's Constitution of India, Supreme Court of India. And um, online and all this technology has made Supreme Court from of India to for India. So it has democratized in a manner that today, sitting anywhere in the world, not only in India, sitting from any place, you can argue your matter, you can take a date, you can listen to at least